The sport of sumo is more than just two overweight guys trying to push each other out of a ring. I mean, in essence, that is exactly what it is. But more than anything, it is an incredibly exciting showcase of strength, technique and tradition. Sumo wrestlers are expected to uphold certain values representative of Japan and the sport of sumo itself, even outside of the ring. A sumo wrestler is supposed to represent dignity, honor, discipline and of course strength. However, these values seem to have been forgotten by many competitors, especially over the last 20 to 30 years. Rumors and scandals involving match fixing, illegal betting, violence and criminal ties to the Yakuza have severely damaged the graceful image of sumo in the eyes of the public, in turn causing huge problems for the sport as a whole. Today, we will explore the dark side of Japan's national sport, from controversial deaths to ringside seats reserved for the country's top gang members. This is the story of sumo wrestling, Japan's controversial national sport. Using the word dishonor in a thumbnail and introduction might rightfully be brushed off as hyperbole or clickbait in many, many cases. But since we are talking about the sport of sumo wrestling here, I would like to think that it's the only word that can accurately describe what's been going on behind the scenes of the sport recently. In order to understand why that is the case, we have to understand sumo and its history, at least on a basic level. If you would like to see me do a more in-depth analysis of the history of sumo in the future, let me know in the comments. First and foremost, sumo wrestling is old. And I mean very old. The Nihon Shoki, one of the two oldest books about Japanese history, dates the first sumo match to the year 23 BC. Sumo became an actual competitive sport with ranks and all that good stuff around the late 17th century, with its ranking system evolving over time and slowly shaping into the system that is still in use to this day. It's quite complicated though, so for now I won't dive any deeper into how it actually works. What's much more important for now is the sport's close connection to Japan's Shinto religion. Sumo involves countless rituals and traditions, some of which come directly from Shinto itself, like the salt throwing and rinsing your mouth with water before entering the ring. Speaking of which, even the dohyo, or the ring, is built with traditional tools and techniques. For me personally, that might actually be the most exciting part about sumo. The fights are obviously incredibly exciting and technical, but watching sumo wrestling is also kind of like stepping into a time machine. Ignore the crowd, the phones and the cameras surrounding the ring and what you see is a competition that is held exactly like it was hundreds of years ago. It's truly fascinating. Obviously, I am not alone in thinking this way, which is exactly why Japanese sumo fans who are much closer than I am to both the sport and also Shinto religion are especially shocked by controversies that go against the traditional values of sumo. Match fixing in sumo is almost as old as the professional sport itself. 400 years ago, many sumo wrestlers had a close relationship to the feudal lords of Japan, also known as daimyo. These daimyo let their wrestlers compete against those under the ownership of another warlord. Occasionally, in order to strengthen an alliance with another daimyo, sumo wrestlers were told to lose on purpose. However, this was before sumo was an actual competitive sport with a ranking system. Serious allegations of match fixing in professional sumo took quite a long time to come out. Tabloids often had news stories of rigged matches in the sport, but it wasn't until 1996 that some serious allegations from a real sumo insider came to light. Suga Konoshin was a pretty successful sumo wrestler for 18 years. After his retirement in 1975, he founded the Onaruto stable, a stable being the place where wrestlers eat, sleep and train. Onaruto was able to produce two notable rikishi, or wrestlers, in particular. One of them, a wrestler by the name Itai, reached the top division of sumo and will become very important to this story later on. 
In 1994, Suga closed down the Onaruto stable and decided to leave the JSA, the Japan Sumo Association. Then, in 1996, Suga came out with a book called Yaochyo, which is also a term used to describe match fixing. In his book, he accused former wrestler Kita no Fuji of match fixing and questionable behavior around women. He also claimed that multiple sumo wrestlers, including himself, were guilty of drug use, illegal gambling, and connections to Yakuza gangs. Such accusations were, at this point, incredibly rare in the world of sumo, especially from former high-ranking members of the sport. Not only that, but the accused Kita no Fuji was actually quite a significant figure of the sport himself, reaching the sport's highest rank of Yokozuna. A Yokozuna, even more so than a regular Rikishi, is expected to represent the values of sumo. As big of a new story as these claims were, an even bigger story was what happened a month after the book's release. In April of 1996, just before he was scheduled to speak to the Foreign Correspondence Club for International Journalists, Suga passed away in a hospital at the age of 53, the official cause of death being pneumonia and heart failure. Only 15 hours after Suga's death, the book's co-author, Hashimoto Seichiro, who was also scheduled to speak to journalists, passed away. His cause of death was also listed as unexplained breathing problems, as well as cardiac arrest. According to the police, no foul play was involved in the deaths of both Suga and Hashimoto. However, many people were quite suspicious of these claims, including Suga's own son, as well as former sumo wrestler Itai, who trained under Suga for many years. Four years after Suga and Hashimoto's death, Itai started talking to newspapers, bringing forward even more shocking information than his former stablemaster. He claimed that during his time in the 1980s, around 80% of all fights were fixed, but that match fixing had also become way less common by the time that the interview was conducted in the year 2000. According to his own testimony, Itai was personally responsible for overseeing the match fixing himself for five years, leading up to his retirement in 1991. Apparently, he even received the nickname Bookmaker for this exact reason. There were even stories circulating about an alleged 17-minute videotape of a 1989 JSA meeting in the possession of Itai, proving that top officials of the organization were definitely aware of match fixing in sumo. The alleged tape, however, was never shown to the public. He spoke out about Suga's controversial death as well, stating that his former stablemaster was entangled with a big Yakuza crime syndicate. Itai also stated that a writer's group by the name Kominto was after Suga around the time of his death, and that this exact group was now offered around 300 million yen to silence Itai himself. A reporter of the Shukan Gendai, on the other hand, claimed that the Kodokai, an organization inside the famous Yamaguchi-gumi Yakuza gang, was offered 50 million yen to take out Itai. All of these claims surely make for a good story, which is exactly why many people grew quite suspicious of Itai suddenly speaking out so publicly, exposing not only other wrestlers, but even himself. In addition, Itai himself admitted to having a struggling restaurant business at the time. Reporting such headline-worthy stories could definitely earn him a quick buck. I don't doubt that at least some parts of Itai's story are indeed true, but generally, I would take his claims with a slight grain of salt. True or not, the claims presented by both Itai and Suga surely made some waves in the sumo community. However, sumo wouldn't get into real trouble until the late 2000s, when the waves created years earlier turned into a full-blown tsunami of scandals and allegations. In July of 2010, Japanese broadcaster NHK released a statement announcing that they would not broadcast one of the six annual sumo tournaments for the first time since 1953. This historic decision was a response to a string of controversies connected to sumo that led to a public outcry never before seen in the history of the sport. In 2007, a young sumo wrestler by the name of Saito Takashi attempted to run away from his stable, the Tokitsukase stable. When his stable master Yamamoto Chunichi found out, he ordered three other wrestlers of the stable to punish Saito by beating him with beer bottles and baseball bats. Saito collapsed and was rushed to the hospital, where he soon passed away from his injuries. He was only 17 years old. The public reaction to this incident was so strong 
that even the Japanese Prime Minister at the time, Fukuda Yasuo, called on the Japan Sumo Association to make sure that cases like this will never happen again. Stable master Yamato denied any wrongdoing in the case, but was ultimately charged with six years in prison. Then, in February of 2010, wrestler Asa Shoryu got into a fight that would cost him his sumo career. The big problem was that instead of inside a dohyo, this fight took place outside of a nightclub in Tokyo after a night of heavy drinking and resulted in Asa Shoryu breaking the victim's nose. Asa Shoryu at that point had long been known for bringing a bad boy image to the sport of sumo that was something rarely seen before in the sport. For example, there are stories about him starting a fight with a rival wrestler inside a communal bath. One time, he pretended to have an injury just to put on a replica Wayne Rooney jersey and play in a charity football match. While I personally can't blame Asa Shoryu for getting excited about pretending to be one of the greatest attacking footballers of all time, the negative reaction to his behavior was only amplified by his rank in sumo. Asa Shoryu was a yokozuna, the highest rank in sumo. As I mentioned earlier, a yokozuna is expected to represent the values of sumo. You know, dignity, honor, discipline, and strength. On February 4th, 2010, as a result of his un-yokozuna-like behavior, Asa Shoryu held a tear-filled press conference, announcing his retirement from the sport. The biggest headlines regarding sumo, however, were yet to come. Just a few months after Asa Shoryu's retirement, a wrestler of the Ozeki rank, sumo's second highest rank, would get in big, big trouble. It was discovered that Koto Mitsuki of the Sadokatake stable got involved with an illegal gambling ring connected to the Yakuza. The stable master of Otake stable also admitted to being involved with the same gambling ring and claimed to have accumulated debts of more than $50,000. The gambling bets themselves were organized by Furuichi Sadahide, a Churyo rank sumo wrestler from Osaka, who also extorted huge sums of money from Koto Mitsuki. Not only that, but Furuichi had a close relative who was apparently a member of an independent Yakuza group in Tokyo, which had close ties to the Yamaguchi Gumi, Japan's biggest Yakuza gang. This wasn't the first time that the Yamaguchi Gumi was linked to sumo. In fact, it seems like they might have been involved with the sport, in one form or another, for a very long time. Yamaguchi Noburu, the successor and son of the gang's founder, reportedly got into the sport all the way back in the 1920s, while expanding the Yamaguchi Gumi into the entertainment business for the first time. In May of 2010, it was reported that more than 50 members of the Kodokai, the Nagoya branch of the Yamaguchi Gumi, were given ringside seats at the 2009 sumo tournament in Nagoya. These ringside seats are apparently not sold to the public, but are instead given to companies and individuals who contributed large amounts of money to the Japan Sumo Association. Whether or not these seats were acquired by actually sponsoring the JSA, or if the Kodokai received these seats through inside connections, is unclear. Their motivation behind acquiring these specific seats in the arena was reportedly the fact that they were often visible on TV. It is said that the Yakuza hoped to be able to show support to their fellow gang members in jail by appearing on television, with Sumo being one of the few programs that Japanese inmates are allowed to watch in jail. An almost identical report was made not even half a year earlier, when members of the Sumiyoshikai, Japan's second biggest Yakuza group, acquired ringside seats to the January tournament. Just like the Kodokai gangsters, they were hoping to be seen by their buddies and bosses in jail. Following the illegal betting scandal, both Kotomitsuki and Otake's stable master were dismissed from sumo, but received no further legal punishment. Furuichi, the wrestler who had set up the bets, was charged with extortion and spent four and a half years in prison. The betting scandal also led to a bigger investigation inside the JSA, which unveiled that out of the organization's 700 total members, 65 of them admitted to illegally betting on baseball, cards, and golf. In Japan, except for a few specific types of race events, betting on sports is generally illegal, which also goes for both baseball and golf. The JSA decided to install a former prosecutor, Murayama Hiroyoshi, as its acting chief, in order to clean up the organization. How much that actually helped is questionable, especially since the organization's links to the Yakuza only became even more interesting with Murayama's appointment. Murayama, until 2008, was an acting director of Suruga Corporation, a construction and real estate company. 
the Suruga Corporation, according to the Tokyo Metropolitan Police Department, paid over $50 million to a front company run by the Gotogumi, an affiliate of the Yamaguchi Gumi. NHK, as mentioned before, refused to broadcast the 2010 Nagoya event, which was scheduled to take place mere weeks after all of these scandals came to light. Instead of multiple hours of live broadcasting of the event, NHK provided merely a 20-minute highlight reel of each day of the event. In early 2011, 13 senior wrestlers were connected to match-fixing, as proven by a series of text messages which were discovered when the police confiscated phones in an investigation regarding the illegal bets from a year prior. One of these messages allegedly even detailed how the wrestlers are supposed to attack and fall, all in exchange for more than $1,000. The JSA's reaction to the Yakuza problem specifically was the exclusion of known gang members at all future Sumo events aided by new surveillance cameras at the sport's biggest venues. In addition, the JSA, with help from the Tokyo police, hosted lectures informing wrestlers on how to sever their ties to the Japanese underworld. Installing a few cameras and holding seminars seems like a pretty mild solution to the problem, to say the least. However, since 2011, reports regarding match-fixing and Yakuza ties have become almost non-existent. Whether the JSA was actually able to fix the problem is a whole nother question. Maybe there is simply some stuff going on that we haven't heard about yet. Violence and bullying inside sumo stables is still a common problem though, and always has been. In fact, it is part of a much larger debate regarding sumo's penchant for keeping up its traditions, which has proven to be a double-edged sword. On one hand, as I mentioned in the beginning of the video, Sumo's connection to the Shinto religion, along with its countless rituals and traditions, give the sport a unique atmosphere that can't be found anywhere else. On the other hand, things like inhumane training sessions, the countless health risks and frequent injuries, as well as the ruthless ranking system in Sumo, make it hard to justify the sport avoiding any significant changes in the future. Of course, that is my opinion, and while I am certainly interested in the sport, and occasionally like to tune in to watch a few fights, I am by no means an expert of the sport, and understand that this discussion in particular might be a bit too complicated for me to talk about. It's also not completely fair to single out the sport of sumo regarding ties to the Yakuza, of course. As regular viewers of my channel know all too well, pretty much every part of Japanese society has had some connection to the underworld at one point in time. This includes some of Japan's biggest companies and even politics. In the case of sumo though, these ties might seem especially shocking to the public because the sport is considered so culturally important and traditional. Sumo has also suffered greatly in terms of popularity, both in terms of attracting young fans as well as new talent. The problems mentioned just a minute ago, along with all the controversial headlines mentioned throughout the video, surely contributed to the unfortunate downfall of sumo. However, out of all the things that Japan is so good at, finding a balance between the old and the new, between tradition and the future, is one of the country's biggest strengths. And who knows, we may just see some very positive changes in the world of sumo as well. Before I end this video, I want to recommend two very special channels to all of those who may have become interested in sumo wrestling in the last 20 minutes. Sumo Stew produces some of the most beautifully edited sumo content out there, covering everything from legendary wrestlers to the super complicated ranking system of the sport. Chris Sumo, on the other hand, provides detailed coverage and match highlights of current sumo events. Are there any sumo enthusiasts among my viewers who would like to share some good content with the rest of us? Let us know in the comments. Also, don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it and subscribe if you haven't already. Either way, as always, thank you so much for watching. Sayonara.